think the uh, record reflects we are back in the session. Parties and council are present. All members of our hearing are also still present. Witnesses back on the witness stand this time as we continue your examination. So just to wrap up on this subject, Mr. LaRock, as a forensic examiner, really your only role is to tell us that those files existed in what state they existed in. Is that correct? No, I would disagree with that. I think that my role goes beyond that. You believe your role goes beyond it to add context and meaning then? Objection argumentative and ask, ask mm -hmm. an answer. Um, my, my role includes uh, examining the evidence, finding pieces of evidence that uh, uh, appear to apply to a particular case, particular questions, and to try to associate those pieces of evidence to uh, show that they have meaning. But you looked at certain checks for, to Metro Sheet Metal to infer a pattern in yesterday's testimony, did you not? Uh, including them with Joseph's phone records, yes. Yeah, but you didn't go back to when he started business with Metro Sheet Metal in October to see if that pattern held true, did you? The uh, phone records that I had went back. I, I checked the records for that pattern uh, for the information that I had. But you didn't, you've already testified just before the break that you did not look at other Metro Sheet Metal checks or records, did you? Um, I, so I, I was not looking at uh, other Metro Sheet Metal records. It's very important to explain in this context that the, um, the comparison I was making was with Joseph's phone records in this case. That's why I was specifically looking at these uh, Metro Sheet Metal checks, and I did not have phone records uh, for the time period. So the answer would be a no. Objection argument if you gave so talking about the computer activity, you indicated yesterday that you believe that the HP tower had undergone some type of factory reset close to the time um, prior to their disappearance. Is that correct? Um, approximately two weeks before their disappearance. And you said that your opinion was Joe did it. Is that what um, you testified to yesterday? The, the evidence indicates to me uh, that that's the most likely scenario. That's an assumption, though, correct? No, that is an assessment of the evidence. Uh, there's another adult in the house, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. There is another adult in the house, correct? At in the, the McStay household, there's an, another adult person. There's uh, Summer McStay. And she, from what evidence you have handy. She appears to know how to use a computer, right? Um, she appears to have a lesser technical skill than Joseph from what I saw in the evidence. She, she knows how to use a computer. I don't think she has possessed the same technical skill. Did you look at Joseph's uh, PayPal records, financial records, credit card records, bank records, or anything like that to determine if he employed a computer service? Um, I didn't specifically look for that, no. So, my home computer gets infected with a whole bunch of viruses, and maybe I don't have time, maybe I'm not as skilled, I can take it to a place like Geek Squad, right? Objection relevant. Ooh. Um, yes, you could. So, to be thorough, to provide context to the activities of the mixed days around their disappearance, you looked for possibly a transaction with such a service, didn't you? Um, I looked at the, uh, considering the tremendous amount of evidence, I looked at the most pieces that I could that uh, seemed to me that they would uh, most efficiently give me an answer to this question. So that would be a no. Objection, argument, no. <laughs> Failure to look for an alternate explanation to Joe did it would not be thorough and complete, would it? Objection, argumentative. Sustained. 
Did you look for evidence that the Epson printer was in the house at or near the time of the disappearance? Um, that for me would be a very difficult question to answer. I, um, I did look at least some photographs uh, trying to find that answer. Did you find it? Um, I didn't conclusively determine whether the printer was in the house. I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 58 for identification and testified to by Dennis Williams. Did you see this picture? <clears throat> Um, I don't recall. I saw uh, photographs that look similar to it. I'm not sure if I saw this exact one. Did you ask the defense team to provide you photos from the house to see if the printer existed? Um, I believe I had a conversation with them about uh, the printer uh, and whether it existed in the house. Um, I don't uh, think that I received information that conclusively determined that. I'm going to zoom in here. What's that sitting on the floor? Uh, that's a printer. It looks, well, it appears to be a printer. It appears to be an all-in-one printer. That would fax <laughs> copy print, right? Uh, most likely, yes. And isn't it true that the default printer <coughs> on the e-machines was an Epson copy fax 9600 or something like that? Um, I, it, uh, the default printer on the e-machine was an Epson, um, I did have the exact model, um, I don't recall if it also was an all-in-one. <laughs> Would it help referring to your report to see what it was described as in the printers and faxes section of the computer? Um, yes, that probably would help. Do you have that in front of you? No, I don't. Does this appear to be your report and that section on it? Uh, yes, it does. Specifically, what is the device description down there? It reads uh, Epson Stylus CX9400F AX Series 2 offline. Is there a reason you spelled FAX instead of just saying fax? Um, unfortunately, that's a, a, a good conclusion that I did, uh, did not see. Uh, F, A, and X are on separate lines uh, in that particular uh, image. It's a screenshot of the printers in there. Um, I actually, when I was looking at it on the separate lines, I thought that, that was part of the model number. Uh, it, it is F, A, X. You didn't do any research to verify that that was an all-in-one type printer, did you? Um, no, for the work that I was doing at that, that time, that didn't seem like a relevant question. So on, in your analysis of the computer activity on February 1st, you made a point comparing the phone records to the QuickBooks activity log that checks were written to Charles Merritt in all lowercase, correct? Yes, that's right. And... Part of that was your attempt to show a pattern of behavior, correct? Yes, a pattern in which uh, Joseph called Chase in every instance that I uh, found after a payment was logged in QuickBooks Online. Show us the forensic evidence that this occurred on the e-machines. Um, the, the fact of this happening, so... It's, it's my opinion that this check activity did not occur on the e-machine, actually, and I can explain that. So that would be consistent with Detective Schrader's testimony that there was no computer activity at all in the first. Um, that's, that's consistent with that, and there's, uh, I would really like to explain that. Can you point us to the forensic evidence that it occurred on the HP tower in the house? Uh, which activity on the HP are you speaking about? This 
checks being written to Charles Merritt, all lowercase. Um, that activity didn't have happen on uh, the HP either. If that happened on a computer in the mixed day house, um, it seems most likely to me from the evidence that I've seen that it was on a computer uh, not in evidence. Again, we have um, a pattern that the e-machine was used less uh, near the end of 2009, and conspicuously, at the same time, there is existence of another computer by the name of Giuseppe Lapp. Point me to the forensic evidence that that transaction occurred on that laptop in that house to confirm your suspicions and assumptions. Objection argumentative. <clears throat> Show me the forensic evidence that would confirm that suspicion. The forensic evidence that I found is in the, uh, that adds to that is in the McAfee logs and associated network logs uh, that show the existence of Giuseppe Lapp uh, on the same <laughs> network as the McStay, uh, in, in the McStay home um, in particularly in 2010, and uh, records in 2009 as well. However, it's impossible to show records of QuickBooks activity on that computer, because that computer uh, was never provided to me, an image of that computer was never provided to me. Uh, from what I've seen in the records and reports uh, in discovery provided by law enforcement, I've seen uh, no mention at all of that computer, Giuseppe Lapp, uh, which indicates to me that uh, the laptop, uh, assuming that that is uh, a, a laptop, uh, it's the computer's name, Giuseppe Lapp, um, exists, that that was not collected. Okay, but point to me the actual forensic evidence that that laptop was used to write those checks. Um, that evidence, as I, as I was explaining, that evidence cannot be found because we don't have the laptop. There isn't any, is there? That, not that I'm aware of. Did you check with QuickBooks to see if they capture IP addresses for their login activities? Um, I asked defense counsel if there were any records of IP addresses, uh, by QuickBooks, the information that was provided to us, uh, in discovery from QuickBooks Online, did not have IP addresses. Um, I specifically requested and uh, assisted defense counsel in preparing uh, an additional subpoena with language to QuickBooks, re specifically requesting IP addresses if they existed. Well, and if this laptop was used, you inferred yesterday, or actually testified yesterday, that it commonly connected to the uh, network within the house, correct? To show that it existed. It, it was definitely on the same network in the house. Right, and so wouldn't that activity show up on the data that you found on that McAfee network uh, thing you testified to yesterday? I'm not sure if I understand your question. Can you, can you clarify? Okay, well, let's just cut to the chase. 1036 is the exhibit you had yesterday. It's your 5A. Show me where that laptop accessed the network or attempted to access the network on February 1st. Um, on, on February 1st, I don't specifically have a record of the computer um, accessing the network. Uh, it's very important, uh, context is incredibly important in this example. Um, the dates that are listed um, on the right hand side here, um, these are times when Giuseppe Lapp specifically reached out to um, the computer that this came from, which um, I believe was the e-machine. Um, there is, I, I don't have any reason to uh, to know or to think that uh, the computer would be reaching out to the e-machine every single time that it's turned on. Well, it, it did 
several times on the 31st and on the 3rd and on other dates that you listed on this exhibit, correct? Uh, several times is, uh, uh, I mean, it, it reached out two times on the 31st, and they're, uh, from what I can see, they both appear to be almost the exact same time. So it's very clear to me, looking at these momentary snapshots in, in time, that this is unlikely to be a complete list of the times that this laptop was on and powered on in the next day home. So you wanted to be thorough and complete, and you emphasize February 1st on these check activities to show a pattern, but you didn't include any laptop activity on this exhibit for February 1st. But now you're claiming it exists? Uh, that misstates what I, what I said. The, uh, please allow me to explain. Well, let me ask you this. Your Honor, you, if the witness can explain, he's asked permission to explain. You can explain your answer. Thank you. Um, in, um, so again, this is most likely far from a complete list of the times that Joseph Elaf was powered on, on this network being used, etc. We, we really don't know. All we know from these logs, and this is a complete list of the logs in, uh, of the McAfee logs indicating the existence of Giuseppe Lab. Um, there, there is no entry in here for February 1st, but that doesn't at all mean the computer wasn't on and being used at February 1st. It just simply means that Giuseppe Lab did not try to make the same access to the e-machine that it did. It's, it's important to understand computers and programs and computers, they do a lot of activities on their own. Um, what I call system activities. So it's not the user doing something, the computer's doing something on its own. And what controls that is the programs on the computer. So uh, it could be Windows, it could be uh, McAfee in this particular case or something else, we don't know what controls when they access. So that's why, that's a long-winded explanation for why these show uh, existence and power on of this computer over the course of this time period, but we don't know exactly when or how often uh, the computer was powered on. The same would be true for February 2nd, correct? What, are, what is the question? The same answer would be true for February 2nd, correct? Um, everything that I just explained for February 1st is true for February 2nd. You well. have no forensic evidence that the laptop was used to create the checks on February 2nd, do you? Um, I have evidence that the computer uh, was in the house and powered on near the times of this, but without the laptop itself, on I February certainly 2nd? don't have uh, evidence to show that that was the computer that was used. On February 2nd? Uh, you had evidence of that on February 2nd? Um, I'm not, I don't understand the question, I'm sorry. You just said you had evidence that the laptop was on the network on February 2nd. Objection. Mistakes is testimony. That asks his testimony to be read back. Do you have evidence that Do you have evidence that these laptop accessed this network on February 2nd? Um, the same answer applies. The laptop was powered on and uh, being used in the time range of February 1st, February uh, let's see, January 31st, February 3rd. We know that in this time range, we see a pattern of this laptop being powered on and used. I don't see an exact entry for February 2nd. Again, it's important to note that this is not a complete list of the time the computer was on. But it was important enough for you to talk about February 2nd. You would have included it if that forensic evidence existed, correct? Um, if there were additional logs... Uh, 
such as this one that did show February 2nd, absolutely, I would have included it. So again, the answer to that, is, or the question is, you have no forensic evidence that the laptop was used to create those checks on February 2nd. Did you actually have to answer? Sustain this cumulative. February 4th. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's back up a second. On the 1st and 2nd, you looked at the QuickBooks activity log. Is that correct? Yes, I did. To be thorough and complete, did you look at all the QuickBooks records or just the activity logs? Um, I, I reviewed, um, I went through all of the QuickBooks, uh, QuickBooks logs. It wasn't my question, sir. My question was, did you examine all of the QuickBooks records, not just the activity logs? Uh, with different amounts of time I spent on them, but I did, uh, page through all of the many, many pages of them. Did you make yourself aware of who had access to QuickBook activity as an authorized user? Um, can you repeat the question? Objection assumes facts not in evidence of other authorized users. My question, sir, was did you make yourself aware or attempt to make yourself aware of the existence of possible other authorized users to the QuickBooks account? Um, I didn't specifically look at the authorized users of the QuickBooks account. Did you do any type of forensic analysis of any device or review any evidence that would show that a third party may have had the access information, including password, to get into the QuickBooks account? Um, I was, sir, as I was looking through all of the evidence, I was definitely trying to pay attention to see if I saw documents or communications or otherwise saying, uh, for example, from Joseph uh, to either uh, Dan Kavanaugh or Chase Merritt or anybody else saying, can you log into this or, or otherwise indicating that somebody had access. Um, I didn't find some uh, such information. Okay, so a reasonable inference from that subjectively would be that Joseph didn't give anyone else permission, correct? Because you found no forensic evidence of it. Objection calls for speculation. That does not rule out the possibility that someone surreptitiously obtained the login information and was not doing so in an authorized basis. Objection. Speculation. 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 You ever had your password stolen? Objection relevant. Did you examine any of the QuickBook records to determine how long Joseph had been a user of QuickBooks? Um, yes, I did. And how long had he been using QuickBooks? I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, the earliest uh, records that I see, that, that I saw when I was looking through the accounts, I, I want to say they went back to 2002. That doesn't mean that, I mean, he could have used some other version of QuickBooks before that, but that's what I recall. Did you determine how long Joseph McStay had been printing checks out of QuickBooks? Um, I, uh, I did look through that activity in the QuickBooks online records. And how long was it? Um, it was very different for the two different accounts. Um, in the... Custom account, there were many, many payments uh, that were logged, um, but uh, the first checks were written uh, or were entered into uh, QuickBooks uh, beginning of February. February 1st, uh, right? Uh, correct. Uh, can I finish uh, my explanation, please? Okay. Um, in the EIP account, um, it, uh, there were definitely checks that were entered into QuickBooks earlier than that. Substantially earlier, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. So, you would agree that a regular user of QuickBooks would know how, and has shown a pattern of printing checks, would know how to print checks, correct? Uh, yes. And a regular user of that, from the pattern of behavior, would know the location and status of the printer being used, correct? Objection speculation.
Um, yes, however, I think there's context in, in this particular case that I can explain that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, shows that uh, even the regular user of this Joseph McStay might have uh, potentially erred or, or forgotten about uh, the Epson printer in this case. You're, you're now speculating that Joseph forgot he had a printer sitting on the floor of his office? Objection. It seems facts, not in evidence. Sustained, uh, sustained all sorts of evidence. You testified yesterday that this test run of print page that was caught in the print spool was, quote, new activity for QuickBooks. Were you attempting to infer that this was the first time Joe was attempting to print a check? No, I was not uh, trying to infer that. I was, uh, rather the new activity uh, that I was discussing was just what we were speaking about a moment ago. In the custom account, um, checks had not been created in QuickBooks until February 1st, 2010. And in the context of this, creating a check in QuickBooks Online, uh, whereas in the, this new activity um, would have a, a greater chance of prompting to run an alignment page. Well, that's quite speculative. Would you agree? No, that's not speculative. That's based on my experience. Um, I've actually tested QuickBooks Online uh, for that. Uh, very for that very question, and confirmed that when you are using it to uh, create checks, uh, it will prompt you to go through the alignment page process. On February fifth, there was no computer activity on either the e-machine or the HP. Correct. Um, I found no user activity on February fifth, um, which. Uh, there, there was definitely system activity. Detective Schrader uh, originally, well, Detective Schrader testified to the uh, system activity on February 1st. Uh, he originally felt that that was a user at the computer clicking on a bookmark and uh, later changed his testimony to that being system activity. So, there was no user computer activity on the 5th, correct? N not that I found, no. So that would be a yes. I'm, help me out with the question again, please. So the answer to my question was simply a yes. Can you please repeat the question? We'll move on. On February 8th, we, you testified about the past searches in the Google toolbar, correct? Uh, yes, that's right. And those would have been readily apparent to anyone who clicked on the Google toolbar, correct? Yes. And by randomly <laughs> selecting other searches that were pre-populated in that toolbar, it would move them to the top of the list, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. And that would cause all the other searches to then move down the list, correct? That's right. And in this case, instead of QuickBooks being the first search that was seen, it was now pushed down to the sixth search that was seen. Is that correct? Um... Actually, the very first search that was run on February 8th was QuickBooks Online. Uh, there were additional searches that were run after that, but <coughs> calling it pushing, pushing down uh, is a strange way to call it for me. Um, it appears to me that the user was clicking on searches. So, correct, the first search was QuickBooks, but then the subsequent searches pushed that QuickBooks search down the list of priority, correct? Down the, not the list of priority, but the list of history. But it pushed it down the list, correct? Correct. And you also verified that there was no remote access capable to the uh, e-machines, correct? Um, I, I, searched, uh, uh, I searched very thoroughly for capabilities of remote access to the computer, um, and I found none. So that'd be a yes, correct? Uh, different from what, what you asked. I, I think you asked if I determined absolutely conclusively or something along those words. This was a case of attempting to prove a negative, uh, which is very difficult. There are 
many, 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 many different ways in which you can remotely connect to your computer at home. Uh, if you want to do this from work or something like that. Um, there are so many different ways of doing it that uh, I cannot possibly check for every single one. What I did is I went through and I looked for the most common ways that uh, I know that people tend to remotely connect to a computer, and none of those existed in this case. You indicated in your testimony yesterday and in your report that it was, quote, notable that the user didn't attempt to delete the browsing history. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that was correct, yeah. Doesn't that make an assumption that the user knows how to do that? Um, I don't think that I would call that an assumption. I think I was listing that a piece of evidence that after these searches were run, the browsing history was not deleted. You said, quote, it is notable that the user didn't attempt to delete the browsing history. That's what you said, correct? Uh, correct. You are assuming who the user is and what knowledge they have when they do that, correct? Um, I, I mean, for, for me, I think it's just the significance of the activity wasn't deleted. Uh, whether or not somebody has the knowledge of, to do that, um, sure, I'll definitely say that not everybody has the knowledge of how to delete browsing history. Um, I personally feel that it is fairly common knowledge, but, uh, but not everybody knows that. That assumption would not be very objective, would it? Um, I disagree with uh, that being considered an assumption. I was pointing out that the browsing history was not deleted. You then indicated that there was a manual shutdown approximately 3 a.m., correct? Uh, 3.55 a.m. Okay, 3.55 a.m. Really early in the morning, right? In, in the wee hours of the morning, showing activity between 2 a.m. and approximately 4 a.m. In an attempt to be thorough... Did you compare Joseph's phone records to that activity to see if there was any phone activity consistent with that? Uh, phone records with Joseph's phone records uh, with that activity? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I did. Was there any? Uh, and on February 8th? Yes. I... The phone records that I'm looking at, I actually now I'm... I'm trying to recall exactly the phone records I'm thinking of, I believe, ended on February 4th. Okay. So there was none, right? <laughs> Correct. It wasn't a trick question. So, did you, in an attempt to be thorough and complete, look at the defendant's phone records to see where he was or what activity he had at that time of day? Um... I, I don't recall if I did. Well, you testified yesterday that you didn't have the defendant's phone records, and you didn't review them. I, uh, I think my testimony was different, actually. I, I, I believe that I testified that I was not sure if I had those records. Well, let me show them to you and see if we can figure out that mystery. If I can get the plug into my machine here. You said it was 2 to 3 in the morning, correct? Uh, 2 to 4 in the morning. Right. Uh, this is his phone records, which is 4... I had it noted. Is it 439A, I believe? Yeah, 439. Do you see what would be covered by that time period as displayed on 439? Um, 
I'm not immediately familiar with this. Is these are uh, Chase Merritt's cell phone records? Yes. Um, I see um, calls probably, uh, call or text, one at 5, 17 p.m. on February 7th, and then the next highlighted is uh, 7.26 a.m. on February 8th. So to be thorough and complete, to give context to everybody's activities around this time, would it, wouldn't it have been important to know that there was no way to match up the defendant's phone records to that activity? Um, I think that this is uh, contextually significant uh, information. Um, I don't believe I reviewed this at the time that I was looking at that. Because from this, you would not be able to tell where the defendant was, can you? From this alone, no, you can't. Right. In the end, you testified to several artifacts that were found on the computers. Those are the same things that Detective Schrader found and testified to, correct? Um, I'm sorry, can you hear me? In sum, in total, the several artifacts that you found from the forensic analysis of the computers are things that either Detective Schroeder found or even testified to. Is that correct? Well, object as vague as to the artifacts or items. In referring to this missing laptop, isn't it true you referred to it as, quote, potentially highly significant? Um, I think I did write that in my report, yeah. Is it your posi position that that is an objective use of language? Um, I believe that that is based on the objective findings that I detailed in that section of the report where I show that at the time the activity on the e-machine is lessening, um, which is also about the time that uh, the mixed days are moving into a new home, the Fallbrook home, there is also uh, data showing that this laptop, Giuseppe Lap, exists and is powered on on the network. Um, seeing as how I had a, uh, there, there is not a lot of information to uh, draw upon from the e-machine because of this lack of activity, if it is correct that Giuseppe Lap is a laptop that Joseph was using instead of the e-machine at this time, which uh, is a logical conclusion, uh, then I think that the, uh, it is my opinion, my expert opinion, that the evidence contained on that laptop uh, would be significant to this case. Well, that assumes a lot of content that's on that laptop. Objection, argument. Of whether it's objection sustained. Whether an item of evidence is significant or not, such as a an electronic device would depend on what's on it, right? Um, yes, that's true. So to describe something out the gate as significant, you have to make an assumption that it contains stuff that's significant. Objection that misstates his testimony did not say significant. Objections sustained on that ground since the law is argumentative. You talked about the SketchUp um, item 3A of yours, which is Exhibit 1026. And I'm going to show that up here on the screen. It was the FRED 2-E PDF. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. You highlighted and emphasized for us the fact it was created on January 31st, correct? Uh, yes, I did. Well, because you took the steps to actually highlight it in the exhibit for us, right? Right. Is there a reason why you did not highlight the date the file was last accessed? Yes, uh, there's absolutely a reason I did not highlight that one. Um, the date the file was last accessed was February 5th, 2010 at 6.57 p.m. Um, this is the exact same time that Detective Trader was talking about with a uh, bookmark. Um, there were tens of 
at least ten, tens of thousands of files that were all accessed during this period. I believe it was about 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. The reason for those accesses was it, uh, it, it appears uh, that a virus scan ran on the computer at that time. Um, this is not human activity. Therefore, um, I did not highlight this uh, because it, uh, it does not show human activity related to this. But this isn't a bookmark. This is actually a document. Correct? Um, yes, that's right. And those are two different things, right? They are. So did you do anything to confirm your suspicion that it was non-human, non-user initiated conduct and was in fact a virus scheme? Yes, I did. Um, I went through um, there. Uh, I went through various uh, other logs on the computer, which show when a user is specifically opening files. Um, it didn't exist in there. Um, I looked through the internet history, which also tends to document when a user is actually accessing files. Um, it was not in there. Um, there were. I also just ran a search in general for this file. Uh, because a lot of the time, if, we, if I'm using my software, even if I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for to see what's related to it, I'll uh, type in and search for the name of the file, and my software is powerful enough to show me these are the items related to that, and uh, nothing came up. It was very clear to me that this was simply part of a virus scam. To provide full context and meaning to uh, that exhibit or that potential evidence, did you examine Mr. McStay's phone records? Um, I was familiar with the, the, the phone records in the same ways before, and again, to the best of my knowledge right now, they ended on February 4th. And likewise, you didn't check the defendant's phone records either? Objection argumentative. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, I just, I'm sorry, the objection to seeing this human <clears throat> So talking about the QuickBooks activity, which electronic device did you find the QuickBooks evidence on? Um, I looked at a lot of different pieces of QuickBooks evidence. Uh, can you be more? You looked at? Um, I, I looked at uh, many different pieces of QuickBooks online evidence. Um, can you be more specific? The QuickBooks activity logs, which device were those found on? The QuickBooks activity logs were provided uh, in discovery. Um, I looked uh, for QuickBooks Online activity uh, on the computers and uh, matched it up where I could. So they were not on a device, is what you're saying? There, it's, it's an apples and oranges situation. These logs were provided by QuickBooks. These are records that QuickBooks Online has. They're not records that would be stored on the device. So, they weren't on a device. Correct? Um, that's the same answer. And who asked you to do the comparison? Oh, I'm sorry. Strike that. The phone records were not found on a device either, correct? Uh, same, same thing there. Those were provided in discovery from the phone company. So, but your job is to forensically examine electronic devices, correct? Um, yes, and you consider context of that. Who asked you to do the comparison between the McStay phone records and the QuickBooks activity? Um, uh, that idea was presented to me uh, by Raj Malin. And did you object in any way that it was outside the scope of a forensic examination of a device? Objection, argumentative. As a certified forensic examiner, the mission statement of that certification is to examine electronic devices, correct? That is that is part of it. Context is very important and needs to be considered part of that. So uh, examining phone records in this case that were provided to me in discovery is absolutely a part of examining the devices themselves. Were you provided the defendant's phone records to do the same comparison for full context and comparison? Um, I was provided the uh, defendant's cell phone records. Really? Because yesterday <coughs> and just a few minutes ago you said you weren't. 
Objection misstates his testimony. Uh, again, my my knowledge, of, my recollection of my testimony yesterday is that I wasn't sure, and when I was first asked that question, I could not recall if I had been presented with those records. Um, but uh, I I'm quite certain that I had been provided them. Uh, yeah. Did you prepare any exhibits correlating the QuickBooks activities with the defendant's phone records? Uh, no, I I did not. Did you provide any testimony in direct examination correlating the defendant's phone record activity with the QuickBooks activity log? Objection, relevant. You offered that evidence as pattern of activity, correct? Yes, I did. Who asked you to establish that pattern? Objection, relevant, Your Honor. Well, your attempt is to provide full context through a thorough examination of all the evidence so you can explain to us what the evidence means, right? Objection, argument, or cumulative? Objection, sustained as cumulative. Were you made aware of the testimony by the QuickBooks representative about the time capture that is reflected in the T-Mobile uh, records? Um, can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Were you made aware of the testimony of the customer service representative from T-Mobile regarding the significance of the time that is shown in the, in the phone records? Um, I'm, I don't think that I've, uh, I'm, I'm not aware of the testimony of that representative, uh, um, at all, I don't believe. So you're not aware about the fact of the fact, other than looking at the phone records, it does not capture seconds. Um, I, I, I did see uh, as I was looking at them that it appeared that it did not capture second, seconds. So I think I was aware of that, but not through testimony. You are not aware of the fact that the records uh, basically round to the nearest minute in those records because it doesn't show the seconds. Objection, argumentative, he's stating what the witness actually knows. Were you made aware of that testimony? Can you repeat what the testimony was? That, since the seconds aren't captured, the records reflect the whole minute, or the whole, rounded to the nearest minute, as opposed to its full minute and three seconds, or 58 seconds, or whatever. I considered the possibility. I wasn't aware whether that was true. So, at times, most of those calls that you noted in your comparison to establish a pattern of activity, they actually showed one minute, correct? They, uh, they didn't show seconds. They showed one minute, correct? I, I must be misunderstanding your question. Did not the record show, at multiple occasions, where those calls were made, one minute. Objection vague as to which calls. Um, I, I think that perhaps you're referring to the calls to Chase Merritt were made within a minute of the activity in some instance? No, sir. I'm referring to the length of the call being only documented as a minute. N now I understand what you're saying. Yes, I did see a call duration listed as one minute. And in your testimony, isn't it true you are attempting to imply that there was communication on a particular topic during that time? Uh, no, I was not trying to imply that. Uh, in fact, I think we discussed during my testimony that uh, some of the calls that were listed as one minute um, seems a likelihood that perhaps those weren't answered, uh, that maybe it was a voicemail that was left or Otherwise, the call was not connected. Then what is the purpose of establishing this pattern if you're not asking us to infer the content? Um, I think it's important to recognize that each time a check is logged in QuickBooks Online, uh, Joseph calls Chase Merritt um, within a short period of time thereafter. Did he do so on the 5th? Um, uh, 
I, sh I should clarify up to the fourth, up until the uh, known disappearance of the gala. But again, it would not be very objective to assume that those phone calls were regarding those checks, right? Objection, argumentative. We'll go ahead and take our uh, memory recess at this point until 1 30 this afternoon. Keep in mind uh, the admonitions previously given to you on the form. For discussing any opinions about the case, not to discuss the case. Again, that means not uh, discussing about the case. Either the witnesses, testimony, and the other parties or attorneys. And we'll see everyone back at 1 30.